In the Kinvivo shopping list, we have now real-time updates. That means if one user checks an item, it automatically is populated as an event to others so they can reload the list and see updates in real time. We achieve that by implementing a real-time socket IO server that's being used in Next.js and communicating between those services happens via a Redis queue. So let's look into how all of this is being implemented. What we can see here is KinVivo shopping list and there are two users logged in. So there is one and in this browser we have a different one. Now as we would add an item, it's being added to the one user, but then also the other user gets the update in real time. And also if this user bought this item and checks it, once it's removed, we also see it being removed here. And this of course also works for updates. So if we want to buy three, we update this. And as we can see, this directly also is reflected in the other shopping list. So let's have a look on the conceptual architecture, how that's being implemented. Okay, so we have our next JS application. And then also what we have is, um, let's say we have our next JS backend, so the server side, and let's also assume we would separate this into the client, so the front end browser side. Let's call it front end. Now, what I also added is a real time express JS server. I didn't want to add socket IO into the next JS server or backend because that would mean that you have to do some custom stuff that would then also break some functionality of next JS. Um, so it's, I think, not the best way to add the socket IO server part into the backend. Uh, so instead, I created a small Express.js server that handles the real-time stuff. And then also a very important ingredient is our Redis server or our Redis queue. So how this works now is we have our Next.js front end and this basically would um, send an update to the list. So for example, it removes an item uh, or updates a list item and so on. So whenever that happens, um, um, this update is being uh, published into a Redis queue. So basically we have an event that we emit, uh, list updated or something. And then what happens is that the real-time express server is listening to it. Listen to this update. So why it works like this is that we have a connection, so a socket IO like real-time connection between the Next.js frontend and the real-time server. So there are multiple real-time servers in potentially that all listens for this update. And then since we are connecting via a WebSocket connection, um, we have basically, yeah, multiple servers that can be connected to it. So there is a load balancing stuff uh, before that because I'm hosting all this th those things in my Kubernetes cluster. So this basically comes for free, but conceptually you can think about the Realtime Express server also being a cluster. And the Next.js frontend connects via WebSockets to this uh, service. And then it listen, listens to um, list updates. <coughs> so this makes the whole round trip. So whenever basically a list update is being published, the client listens to it. And then when that happens is that we do uh, router.refetch. So in the end, the whole round trip would look like this. So one front end is updating the list. So the Next.js backend server within the Next.js action emits this event to the Redis queue. 
And then the Redis uh, message broker broadcasts that event and there are some real-time servers that listens to it. And the Next.js frontend is connected via socket IO to the real-time servers. And now it gets the update via a WebSocket connection. And whenever that happens, it basically does a router refresh. So it gets the new data from the backend server. And then also within the server action, once something is updated, there is a uh, cache invalidation so that when the Next.js frontend refetches the data, it gets the new data. So this is more or less the conceptual side uh, there are some details like authentication so on that we will look into next. So first let's have a look into the absurd list item action. So let's imagine we will add or change a list item and this change should be reflected in real time to other clients. So we, we here we have the Next.js server side action that's basically handling this. And there are some things that are happening. We have the Kinvivo app being in German and English. Um, there's some authentication happening, uh, some validation, and so on. So this is not really the most important parts. But at some point, we use our database to upsert the list item. So we either create it or update it based on the data that we get from the client for this action. And now what we can see here is we use the Redis publisher, and this publishes the purchase list updated event. So this happens on the server side, right? And this is connected, so the Redis publisher is connected to the Redis uh, queue or the Redis broker. And now it emits an event that a list was updated and it, it gets some data. So it gets the household ID um, and then also the list ID and the user ID as well. So the household ID, you can imagine every user in QueenVivo is part of a specific household. So for example, I am part of my household and then my wife is also part of my family household and so on. So those uh, basically events are always relevant for the household. That's more or less the core part of the concept of the KinVivo app. So now this is being published from the Next.js side to the Redis publisher. So maybe let's have next a look into the Redis publisher, what that actually is. So the Redis publisher is using the Redis package and it creates a client and connects to the Redis URL, which is given by the environment variables. One thing that can be important is that you do a ping interval because in my setup, my infrastructure, the Redis itself basically would disconnect stale connections after some time. But you want this connection to be alive more or less for forever. So you connect it and then you have the Redis publisher being connected to your Redis uh, queue. So the next important part is our real-time server. So this is not an XJS, has nothing to do with an XJS, it's just a plain express um, Node.js server. And what it does is it also has a Redis subscriber. As you can see here, it's very similar. It's also using the Redis package. It also creates a Redis client. And now what it does is uh, obviously the Redis subscriber connects to Redis. Once it did this, what it does is uh, subscribing to the purchase list updated event. So whenever that happens and Redis gets this event, this server is subscribed to it and now it can handle it. It basically takes the data, the list ID, household ID and user ID that we saw, and then it uses socket IO to emit an event to the specific household ID. So you can imagine household ID like a chat room or something where someone can basically subscribe to all events based on this household ID. And the event that's being triggered or emitted is the purchase list updated. And with that, the data, which list ID it actually is, is being sent and also the user ID. So the socket IO server lives inside this real-time service as well. And how that works is basically you use socket IO to create a socket IO server. And then the, the socket IO uh, server it listens to connection to new connections. So from the front end, the Next.js front end, 
someone connects now to this socket I server. And how that works is it joins, so from the client side, you join a household via the household ID. And then you can also, of course, leave a household. And that basically says the socket, so the connection that was established, uh, this socket joins this household or it leaves the household. And then what we also have is the uh, a middleware to authenticate. So what I do is I use clerk JS uh, as my authentication provider. So once you locked, you log into the Convivo app, you do this via clerk. And then while after you logged in, you get like a JWT authentication token. And this token now I also use when I establish the connection between my Next.js front end uh, via socket IO to my socket IO server. So I pass this token down to the socket connection. And then also I add the household ID uh, from the client. And basically I say, okay, I want to connect to this household ID uh, channel, so to speak, and then also using my auth token. And then what I can do is I can verify the token. So this is a function that comes from the clerk library. So this means that um, it takes the token and just verifies if the token is at all legit and if also it's it's valid, it's um, it's a real authenticated user. And then with from that token, basically what I get is the user ID, the clerk user ID. And then what happens is I I do a simple fetch call to a custom API in my Next.js app. And basically what I'm doing is I'm asking the Next.js server, hey, is that clerk user uh, actually part of this household? Uh, because obviously you could be authenticated, but then just pass in any household ID, whatever you want, um, and that should not work. So you should not be able to connect to a whole, to a different household, obviously. And uh, since the Next.js app knows uh, all the households and what user are assigned to it, we can use the custom API endpoint um, to check whether the household has, uh, the user has access to the given household ID. And then also there is a, an API key uh, that's configured that every API request on the Next.js site is basically uh, verifying. And then we basically just check if the uh, response is positive, so it responds with has access. Um, it basically continues, and if it does not, then it throws an error. So this way, the socket air connection is authenticated by the JWT token, which we get from our clerk authentication provider. And then also we uh, th see if the uh, authorization is valid. So if the user is actually also able to connect to the household channel, so to say, that he wants to connect to. So the last part of this uh, very exciting puzzle is actually how do we subscribe now in the Next.js front end to this purchase list update event. And I created a custom use WebSocket hook and it basically passes down the household ID, which obviously I know after I was logged in, after I logged in, I get the information what the household ID is in my client. And then I pass this household ID, the event I want to connect to, and then also a callback function. Uh, so whenever this event happens, uh, this callback function is being triggered and all it does is a refresh. And um, basically this is a function from Next.js from the use router. And what this does is it refreshes the data that's needed for this page to properly render and sends in the action when the um, the list is updated, um, the data gets invalidated. So once we refresh, we also get the new fresh data and the list is updated and we see the current result. So how does the use WebSocket hook look like? So essentially this is not super complicated. As we would expect, we use Socket IO client library in order to establish a connection to our second Socket IO web server. So we have this um, WebSocket URL being passed as a um, environment variable. 
and then we do some stuff here, auto connect, and then here you see the part where we pass the auth token, but also the host alt ID we want to connect to, and the token we get from a helper function directly from the clerk library. And then as we see, once the connection is established, we join a household ID. So the socket that was created joins a specific household ID channel. And uh, then once the event is happening, we just call the callback and pass the data. And the event that we have here is just a parameter of the use WebSocket uh, function. So that wraps it up, how you can create real-time updates and things within Next.js using Socket.io and a Redis queue behind the scenes. I hope you liked it. If so, please subscribe. Also leave a comment if you have different approaches, uh, if you have improvements or suggestions. I'm always happy for feedback. And also make sure to look onto the kinvivo.com website and subscribe to the newsletter. So we are very early, but uh, obviously there will be an app usable at some point in time. Thanks. Bye.